Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Talk Tech on the Unbiased Blog. Now it's clear which car are we reviewing today. This is the BMW X4 M and BMW has made sure that we get to know that it's an X4 and on top of that, that it's an M variant, the motorsports variant. Yes, you can see the brake calipers, the alloy wheels, the fender, everything reminds you that you are in a BMW M badge. And what a way to start the proceedings with BMW cars on our channel. This is the first BMW car we are reviewing on our channel and I'm excited because this is the BMW X4 M Coupe. So now let's talk about the design of this car. In terms of dimensions, this car has a length of 4,752 millimeters, a wheelbase of 2,864 millimeters, and a width of 1918 millimeters. And because this is a coupe, the height is 1621 millimeters, making the BMW X4 really, really stretched in terms of proportions. The huge kidney grills that remind you that it's a BMW SUV, and you make no mistake, right? But this one sits in the middle of X3 and X5, adding the coupe shape, giving you that coupe design, making it even a more driver's car. Even before you enter the car, you're reminded you're driving an M car thanks to the key, and it's a BMW thanks to the lock button, which is the BMW logo. Even from the front, BMW X4 stands out. Thanks to these boulders on the bonnet, this grill, this BMW adaptive lights, this muscular chunky bumpers and, you know, striking LED lights in there. And these air vents through the bumper, giving you a lot of airflow and downforce, you know, specifically for the M variant. And in India, you get the X4 only in M variants. You get two diesel options and a petrol option. And we have been testing for a week the BMW X4 M 30i 2 liter petrol variant yes definitely there are plus and minuses for being a coupe on the design front you can see these lines running across the car the m badging on the fender line these fake vents on the fender and a lot of m badging on the wheels too you see the brake calipers turn blue with the m badging and even the alloy wheels have an m badging on them what i particularly liked about the bmw x4 is the cladding running across the car you know the cladding running through the bumper but gets into a 3d shape on the door panel throughout the running board which looks really nice and chunky and you know not just sporty it also adds to the durability and safety of the car another interesting thing is this you know subtle chrome running across the windows and the roof rail which looks really nice and sporty what really is interesting is the size of the windows these are really really huge windows be it the front window the rear passenger window even the rear quarter panel is huge windows making the car a little more airy because this is a coupe you will definitely feel a bit of claustrophobia if you're tall sitting at the back but thankfully you also get a panoramic sunroof that adds to the visual appeal of the car and also to the airiness of the car and you can also notice the big 19 inches wheelers which are 245 50 profile and like the headlights, the tail lights are also wrap around. So you can see them running across the fender, going towards the boot of the car, which looks really nice. So this is the striking coupe back of the BMW X4M, the 30i we are driving, badging right there, BMW. The logo works as a boot opener. Also press of a button and the boot lid opens. Yes, because it's a coupe, the space is limited in the boot because it's not a full grown SUV as the X5 or the X3. So the boot lid has a metal cladding on it that keeps it safe and you know protected from scratches you also get two buttons on either sides of the boot to lower down the seat so you can you know lower one seat or both the seats or either of them whenever you want it you also have lights really good amount of light which is a good thing to have in the boot area there's also hook to you know cling on to something if you want to keep a packet hang something you can definitely do that there are hangers next to it is the charging port where you can put your cooler or whatever and chill your beer so under the boot area you get space for the space saver tires and tools and other things which you can keep as i mentioned the boot area is limited so at the back you also get two trays one is an integrated tray with the window pane and also the other one is a parcel tray at the back and then again i was mentioning these really nice wraparound lights that are jutting out so they're not in the body they're jutting out of the body which looks really nice because you know it gives you a 3d feel to it one thing that i was saying that the spoiler reminds me of the lamborghini urus is the reason because it goes like this like a floating design and then creates this downforce and then again picks it up so which looks really really nice and obviously the shark fin antenna standing tall on the bmw roof well you can also see there is a camera at the back right above the number plate and the sensors the front lacks the camera which was a little surprising for a car of this size and money 
But BMW has made sure that you get this cladding running across the car, be it the front, the back or the sides and it looks really nice. There are two in exhaust, one on each side and they're working. They're not just for the sake of it. Sadly, no cracks and popples on this one. Now BMW has put the rear reflector on the bumper but they are in a way inside or beneath these curves. Now what happens? Well, you, if you go off-roading or if you go to a dirtier place, the dust accumulates on this and sits right here. Now because it's a coupe or a sports pack, you know, it slants through and you know, in a way, merges with the boot lip and looks really nice and sporty. It's like an integrated spoiler right here. For some people, it's a bit of abruptness in the design. You know, it just ends there and very squarish. Whereas coupes are usually a little more bulkier on the back. You know, it reminds me of BMW X6 or even the GLC 43 coupe, which is more rounded at the back. This one is a little squarish and uptight. So that's all about the design. Now let's get inside before we melt in 43 degrees Celsius and try out the car now. So now that we are inside, I am really, really impressed with the BMW X1. Be it the seating comfort, how the seats bluster you, how it, they are so sporty, the mix of textures, it's just beautiful. And this floating screen right up front, the 10.25 inches screen, the virtual cockpit or the digital speedometers are really, really nice to look at. The chunky steering wheel, the M badging, this carbon fiber texture, this red stitching. First thing I would like to mention is that BMW has made sure that they have satisfied everybody. Be it the CD generation, be it the Apple CarPlay, the wireless Android Autos, the wireless CarPlay, the USB Type-C port people, USB pen drive people, everybody gets their own system. The package includes a CD drive, FM radio, Apple CarPlay, wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. You can put in your USB thumb drive. You can listen to music anyhow possible. So you're not missing out anything. So from millennials to the older generation, everybody has been taken care of. Next thing, what I've noticed in other luxury cars, the counterparts is that you either get a type C port or a type A port with wireless charging, of course, but BMW has made sure you get a type A port, the earlier ones that we were used to, a wireless charging plate and a type C port. So then again, making sure that all the customers, be it a type C, type A or a wireless charging smartphone user, they're all taken care of. That's the best thing about it. Now, what I was saying, outside that everywhere bmw reminds you that you're in an x4 or an m series car and i'll start with that first up right as soon as you sit the steering wheel has an m badge the doors have an x badge once you open the door you can see the x badge a huge x badge even the door plates have an m badging on it the seats have an m badging on it this red stitching reminds you in a sports car or a sports coupe. The seating comfort thanks to these bloated seat button that you know really really cocoons you, makes you all sporty. Especially when the car is so much in control, during the cornering you are not even moving a centimeter because this blostered sides that you can adjust manually. So this ambient lighting running across the car definitely adds to it with this carbon fiber texture, the silver knobs and buttons. Another thing that BMW has, you know, in a way distributed across the car is this pattern on the lights. This looks like the wings or the egg. You see it on the lights inside the cabin lights. You see it on the air vents. And when you shut the door at night, they run through the door and looks beautiful. But this one is like wings running across the car. Looks really, really beautiful and something that I've never seen in the past. I think one of the most advanced tech features have been included in the BMW, be it the gesture control. Now again, BMW has made sure that you wanna do it with touchscreen, you can do it. You wanna do it with gestures, you can do it. You wanna do it with voice control, you can do it. You want physical buttons to do it, you can do it. And lastly, you also have a jog dial to do it. So then again, BMW is making sure that it's earlier customers versus the new age customers. Everybody is satiated. I think it's really, really have best of both worlds. And that's what I really, really love about the BMW's cabin. This is definitely, you know, you can control the AC with voice commands. You can do it with, you know, these buttons, these clicky buttons, this, you know, really have that feel to it. You can do it with gesture, you know, just point fingers out and you can just say anything, just single finger to give voice commands rotate your fingers to give you know music a little volume do that roll it back to lower down the volume change the track or change the channel with the thumb it's 
easy. If you don't like gestures, you can use the steering mounted controls. You can do voice control. You can lower down the volume from here. You can control it with jog dial. So much good things about it. So the floating display is full of information and what I liked about it, it has widgets like options. So you can change the width, add multiple widgets, add multiple pages and definitely, you know, customize it as per your need. And on the left, you get this panel which you can shift between the media, communication, navigation and tweak a lot of things and get a lot of information about the car. Just by click of a button, you can get the X view which shows you the tilt angles of the car, the height of the car, the altitude of the car, the direction of the car that is and you also can see the energy flow of the car when you're driving the vehicle it shows you the engine and how the power is being distributed amongst the four wheels which is beautiful to look at then there are settings to you know change everything about the car from driving mode to exterior lighting to interior lighting to displays to climate comfort and you can also assign different option to the key so if you have like a key that you want to change you can select where you want to unlock in terms of interior lighting you know the ambient lighting at multiple color options it's not like a 64 color option but there are a lot of options that you can play around with and they look really really nice to look at at night virtual cockpit screen it has good amount of information as soon as you change the mode like if you put in it sports mode the dials change the colors change you also see a lot of information on the screen where you can again tweak the car a lot like if i click on sports and I go to sports individual, I can play around with dampeners, I can play around with the engine, the transmission, I can play around with the steering. So a lot of tweakability and it adds to the driving pleasure of the car, which is why people love BMWs and you know, they say share driving pleasure. Switching around different modes, I can go to sports mode, I can go to comfort mode, I can go to eco pro mode, which is for economy. And in terms of gear shift, I've already mentioned you get an eight speed gear shift automatic over here, which is the BMW lever right in your hand. As you put your arm on the armrest, it lands right there. And if you put it in manual, you get these paddle shifters, which are really nice and chunky to control. You also get extended seating comfort. You can extend the thigh support with the press of a button. You just pull it. It is manual, but it is there, which is really nice so you just pull it out and get more seating comfort something that i wanted in the car is missing there's no sunglasses holder which is something that i point out in every car and this is no exception then you have the sunroof control which is a big panoramic sunroof you can just click a button and shut it or open it convenient both the sun visors get lights and mirrors which is very standard something that bmw gave a miss is you know electrically controlled steering wheel so on a car of this size and price it's all manual looks sad and one another thing that i think bmw should just let go of is these maruti 800 unlock lock switch this is convenient but this is too tacky for a bmw in terms of space for cup holders and cubbies there's a lot of space two cup holders right here one is you know given to the ashtray which you can remove if you want to though the glove box is not cool it has a lot of space and a light and a soft texture so if you keep your phone or expensive stuff it doesn't get scratched you also have a lot of space for the driver here you can keep a booklet or even a phone if it's not as huge as a 12 pro max in terms of driver comfort you get all the buttons access and everything on the right hand side in terms of sound you get harman kardon speakers good surround sound really enjoyable experience so now we'll talk about the drive later let's get at the back and see is it really comfortable for somebody my height if the seat is adjusted at this level? Let's get at the back and check it out. So we are at the back now, the rear seats of the BMW X4M and I think it's comfortable. It's not as bad as I was imagining it to be because it's a coupe but space is a little bit of constraint for the headroom. The under thigh support is a bit missing but still they're not as bad as I thought it would be. There is a button that you can make your seats recline a bit more but still they're up front. You won't feel that they're completely reclined in fact the normal position is this and it's just like a just a bit of a recline which does add to you know the comfort but still a lot to be desired of this you also get a center armrest where you can keep your cups there is a couple of cup holders here you get two type c chargers a place to keep your airports maybe you get your own rear ac controls so your blowers your controls and there is a display also that you can see there are magazine holders these seats definitely are curved inside to give you more knee room no problem for knee room or foot room the headroom and the thigh support is something that i felt is a bit on a harsher side and the seat is also a bit on the harsher side compared to what it was on the front the curtains are missing so definitely 
uh, privacy factor of the car is missing. I like the X badging and the interior lighting and this texture running across the car. And these concealed hooks are really nice to you know just play around. It's, if you are somebody who fiddles a lot, this is something that you can do it all day long. So really nice 360 way of you know getting through the hook. There are lights, couple of lights here. I mean, you don't need two lights, but they have given you two lights for some reason, so you can click on them. But then again, it is strictly a driver's car. If you are somebody who enjoys driving, this is your seat, you will enjoy the car. Even the co-passenger is in a very comfortable position. I'm not saying that you can't sit at the back at all. You can sit at the back, even in the middle row, it's not as bad. And you know, definitely have to keep your legs on the either side. Give it away, it's a coupe, let's just let it be. And sit at the front and start driving the car now. So the BMW X4 X-Drive 30i that we are driving is a four-cylinder petrol injured, mated to eight-speed Sipronic sports transmission. In terms of maximum capacity, you get a two-liter engine. This is a petrol engine, 1995cc with 252 horsepower and a max torque of 350 newton meters so yes obviously it's not as powerful as the six cylinder in diesel engine that you get in the x drive x30d because that is a three liter engine and produces a hooping torque of 620 newton meter so in a way this produces almost half of the torque that the diesel engine produces in terms of top speed, it is limited to 213 kilometers per hour, though the zero meter would show you 260 kilometers per hour. But nevertheless, this car reaches zero to 100 in 6.3 seconds. I think we can challenge that BMW. So we are in the driver's seat, as they say, sheer driving pleasure. This is living up to it. I think, you know, the cornering, you know, just revving it up, just speeding it up, just is really, really nice and the work they've done on sound insulation is amazing. You know, you feel like you're cocooned in a sports car, in a scoupe, and it feels really nice. Unless and until you're revving it really hard, you don't hear the engine sound at all, which is really, really nice for a car of this size and shape. I've been driving it around in comfort mode throughout my testing, but definitely we really revved it up, throttled it on the sports mode, and set it individually to, you know, define how we want to go with sports individual changing the dampener changing the steering wheel changing the transmission and everything was on point you know when you're driving in sports mode the gear shifting the down shifting the up shifting everything is definitely on point in fact no matter what mode you are on right now i've been driving on the eco pro mode for a while now and definitely really enjoying the drive in this mode also you know you might feel that it's a bit underpowered but that's what you do when you're testing the mileage right you're trying to get the best out of the vehicle and that's what we're doing exactly right now at this moment and how the display changes when you're driving that, how the steering feedback changes is something really that you start loving about it. As soon as you put it in the sports mode, you feel the car has gone heavy, the dampness has gone heavy, it's got a little stiffer, the steering is heavy. And that's what you like about, you know, different sports modes, different modes of driving in terms of fuel consumption. We got roughly around 10 to 13 km per litre depending on how we're driving, what mode we were driving and you know the company claims around similar numbers yeah so you also have adaptive mode you know that judges how you're driving not really literally judgmental but you know tracks how you're doing and how you're driving and automatically very quickly changes the modes for example if i'm an eco pro mode right now and i you know start revving it up and rushing up things it'll switch to comfort and then if it feels the need it can automatically go another level and go to the sports mode so that's how it works so you know, if you're ever unsure of which mode to drive the car in, you can just put in adaptive mode, just the button here, and you can start driving like that. And if you are a person who's just, you know, going on and about testing the car, you know, really want to flaunt off the M series, you can definitely put the sports mode just with the gear shift going left. And if you want to really test the car to its middle, you can further go down or up and put it in manual and then use the paddle shifter like really convenient to use the paddle shifters also only one thing you know that i would would have wanted the car to do better in terms of driving capabilities because the suspension the comfort the engine everything feels top notch the steering is a bit heavier i mean maybe it's just for me but i feel that it's a little numb and a little heavier for my comfort i mean i've tried different modes and tweaked it around from the settings but it still felt a little bit unresponsive and a little bit heavier. It doesn't adapt to the way you're driving. Like if you are in tight traffic situation, it should get lighter, but it still remains a little on the heaviest side, which really kind of takes away some kind of fun out of the driving. Otherwise, 
it's really nice to hold and all and the experience is really nice it's just that the whole feedback of the steering is something that bmw can work upon in terms of safety features you get lightweight braking system dynamic stability control system anti-log bar braking system dynamic traction control automatic differential brake cornering brake control dynamic brake control start off assistant and hill descent control the great thing is that BMW allows you to communicate or interact with the screen in many ways. You can touch the screen, you can give voice commands, there is a jog dial. So you can easily access or, you know, change commands and give commands and do whatever the goal and get access to whatever you need. But for navigation, I would definitely not recommend the voice recognition. And I'll tell you why. Just listen to this. Navigate me to India Gate. In which country should I look? India. Please say the name of the desired country. India. Please say the name of a country. For example, England. India is a country. I'm sorry. Sometimes I seem to be somewhat hard of hearing. So, BMW admits that it's kind of hard of hearing sometimes and this is what exactly happens when you try to navigate anywhere for example if i say anything even if i give the city town and country it's still not navigate so let me do that also navigate me to noida uttar pradesh india in which country should i look india please say the name of the desired country england please say the name of a country for example england England. Please try once again in surroundings that are as quiet as possible. Exactly my point. I mean, there is no way you can tell the navigation system through voice commands where to go. So you have to manually go there and, you know, kind of start typing to get where you want to, or you can just go to point of interest. So that's the problem with the voice navigation. So you really have to type in or use the jog dial to interact and type in. That's something that BMW really, really needs to work upon because, you know, the other car manufacturers have really, really taken their voice assistant to next level. So, I mean, that's all about uh, the BMW X4 M. I mean, this is really definitely the driver's car and really hot to look on, especially this color, the red color that we are driving and it comes in really fancy colors, blues and reds, white or blacks. It is colorful, peppy color, sporty color so that, you know, it goes with the whole design of the car, the sports back or the coupe shape and definitely a good looking, good looking car. So, I mean, that's all about the BMW X4M from our end. If you have any queries, you can tweet to us, reach out to us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or you can leave a comment below as simple as that. And if you like this video, please make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to this channel and share the video. Thanks for watching the Unbiased Blog. This is Nikhil signing off.